So social networks are these intricate things of beauty. And they are so elaborate and so complex and so ubiquitous, in fact, that one has to ask what purpose they serve. Why are we embedded in social networks? I mean, how do they form? How do they operate? And how do they affect us? And so my first topic with respect to this was not death, but obesity. And I suddenly, it had become trendy to speak about the obesity epidemic. And along with my collaborator, James Fowler, we began to wonder whether obesity really was epidemic and could it spread from person to person like the four people I discussed earlier. So this is a slide of some of our initial results. It's 2,200 people in the year 2000. Every dot is a person. We make the dot size proportional to people's body size. So bigger dots are bigger people. And in addition, if your body size, if your BMI, your body mass index is above 30, if you're clinically obese, we also color the dots yellow. So if you look at this image right away, you might be able to see that there are clusters of obese and non-obese people in the image. But the visual complexity is still very high. It's, it's not obvious exactly what's going on. In addition, some questions are immediately raised. How much clustering is there? Is there more clustering than would be due to chance alone? How big are the clusters? How far do they reach? And most importantly, what causes the clusters? So we did some mathematics to study the size of these clusters. This here shows on the y-axis the increase in the probability that a person is obese given that a social contact of theirs is obese. And on the x-axis, the degrees of separation between the two people. And on the far left, you see the purple line. It says that if your friends are obese, your risk of obesity is 45% higher. And the next bar over, the orange line, says if your friend's friends are obese, your risk of obesity is 25% higher. And then the next line over says if your friend's friend's friend, someone you probably don't even know is obese, your risk of obesity is 10% higher. And it's only when you get to your friend's 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 that there's no longer a relationship between that person's body size and your own body size. Well, what might be causing this clustering? There are at least three possibilities. One possibility is that as I gain weight, it causes you to gain weight, a kind of induction, a kind of spread from person to person. Another possibility, very obvious, is homophily, or birds of a feather flock together. Here, I form my tie to you because you and I share a similar body size. And the last possibility is what is known as confounding because it confounds our ability to figure out what's going on. And here the idea is not that I, my weight gain is causing your weight gain, nor that I preferentially form a tie with you because you and I share the same body size, but rather that we share a common exposure to something like a, like a health club that makes us both lose weight at the same time. And when we studied these data, we found evidence for all of these things, including for induction. And we found that if your friend becomes obese, it increases your risk of obesity by about 57% in the same given time period. And there can be many mechanisms for this effect. One possibility is that your friends say to you something like, you know, they adopt a behavior that spreads to you, like they say, let's go have muffins and beer, which is a terrible combination. Uh, <laughs> But you, ad you adopt that combination, and then you, you start gaining weight like them. And another more subtle possibility is, is that they start gaining weight, and it changes your ideas of what an acceptable body size is. And here, what's spreading from person to person is not a behavior, but rather a norm. An idea is spreading.